A very good afternoon. It is Sunday. It is Global Weather and Climate Day. I hope you are having a good one and a good weekend, of course. Edition 48, a very big video today. I'm only passing on the things that I'm seeing, folks. I'm no climate expert uh, or even meteorology uh, expert, but certainly I, I try to show you as balanced of a view as possible. Of course, there has been a lot of talk about uh, the warmest June on record for the British Isles. That has been declared. That is what the Met Office have stated in terms of June 2023. But uh, of course, there is um, counter arguments to that one. Of course, it has been an exceptional month. It has been a very warm month. There is no getting away from that. The planet is a warmer place than it was even 10 years ago. Again, that is fact. We're not uh, disputing that one. Uh, but this is the year-to-date temperatures of weatherbell.com. This is the CDAS 0.5 data. And you can see here that we have got um, considerably warmer versus colder than average around the face of the planet, both over the oceans as well as over the land areas as well. A large area of the Northern Hemisphere, warmer than average, Europe, Asia, North America. The cooler areas, well, most of Africa is, believe it or not, below, uh, below average. And of course, a lot of people showing those nice red scary charts indicating that the temperatures are exceeding levels we've never seen before over Africa. But if you look at the year to date, of course, we've just surpassed the halfway point of 2023 and Africa is not looking too bad at all. India, below average. Pakistan, below average. Mongolia, below average. Western China. Yes, there is ongoing heat waves across, uh, you know, swathes of uh, this very large land area. But when you look at it overall, I would say that China is actually slightly below average because the, the, the level of cool in the West is a little bit stronger than the level of warmth in the east, if you notice here. That's interesting, isn't it? Alaska, year to date, war, uh, cold than average. Canada, without any doubt, warmer than average. Western United States is below average. The UK and Ireland, well above, of course, the very warm Atlantic, is reflected in the uh, air temperature over uh, the tropical, subtropical, and mid latitude Atlantic Ocean, as you can see here. Australia, below average. Um, even areas, of course, Southeast Asia, where we're seeing all the extreme temperatures recorded back in uh, March, April, and even May, where we had all-time records fall in Vietnam, Thailand, uh, Laos, I think, was uh, an all-time record also, but not looking outstandingly off the scale warm. Check out the last 90-day period, folks, and one could argue that it's 50-50, if not slightly below average in terms of the land areas. Of course, that water temperature, again, warm in the air mass, so it would be silly of me to forecast a cold than average July overall based on the, the release of feedback to the atmosphere from the warm surface temperatures over the Atlantic. Look at Alaska. Wow, that is chilly, isn't it? Look at Mongolia. Look at the areas that have been warmest compared to average for the entire year is below average. Africa, still looking not too bad at all, parts of Northern Africa. And again, we are at uh, approaching the hottest time of the year uh, in this region of the world. So 45 to even near 50 Celsius isn't unusual to see at this time of the year. Of course, many uh, sources would have you believe different. Australia, below average overall. We are seeing fluctuations between extreme heat and extreme cold in parts of Australia. In the last wee while or so, the United States certainly looking not too bad here. This is Europe uh, over the last 90 days. And you can see here that central and eastern portions of the, the continent is below average for the 90-day period, remember. Warmer than average, no surprise here, given the SSTs, Ireland, Northern Ireland, the UK overall, Iberia, France, uh, the low countries, Western Germany, that is your cutoff in terms of warmer versus colder. Scandinavia is warmer than average also. Check out uh, North America. Uh, Alaska really stands out. The lower 48 also stands out. By the way, 
They've just had one of their coldest Junes in the last 25 years over the lower 48 of the United States. Very warm ac across Canada. A lot of um, talk, of course, about the devastating wildfires, and rightly so. But you notice here the areas that have seen the wildfires, i.e. parts of Ontario, but specifically Quebec, has been average for the last 90-day period. So isn't that interesting? Now, a couple of interesting facts with regards to the CET or Central England temperature. So, of course, the Met Office has said that the UK has seen the, the coldest June uh, on record. But what I want to say to you is that the temperature of the CET, the average for 2023 was 17.0 Celsius. Now, interestingly enough, last year, the Met Office corrected the CET for 1976 June from 17.0 down to 16.9, which means that, of course, June this year beats that by 0 0.1 degrees uh, Celsius. Why that adjustment has taken place? I don't know, but it has. So, of course, that makes June a, you know, record. Well, I was going to say record breaking warm, but it actually isn't. There are several other CETs that show a warmer June than 2023. And y y yes, you have to go back to 177 years, but uh, we had uh, June of, what, 1676 a CET average of 18.0 Celsius, so a full degree warmer than what we've seen in June. We also seen uh, 1822, 17.1, which beats 2023 by 0 0.1 degrees Celsius. And indeed, we had an 1846 CET for June of 18.2 Celsius. Bear in mind, it's 17.0 is 2023. So, of course, records only go back, what, 177 years in terms of the, I believe, the, the UK overall temperature. So beyond 177 years, we essentially don't know, you know, based on these CETs, warmer by a good degree above June 2023, it would, this kind of proves, folks, that we have seen warmer in the past. Yes, the CET only takes into account three a tri point over in central England, I believe. Uh, but with the CET a full degree warmer than what 2023 was back in 1822, 1846, you know, 1826, uh, 1676, we've got several years warmer with the CET than 2023. And of course, we're seeing you know, Antarctic sea ice at record low levels at the moment here. Record low levels, record being only a short period of record. And of course, we've got these multiple examples in th hundreds, thousands, even millions of years. Tree rings, for example, Greenland was warmer in the past. This is my problem that a lot of the, the talk these days with regards to climate change, the planet is overheating, etc., etc., etc. I have to, I really struggle with that one based on other aspects we need to look at. How do we know that the planet is warmer now than it's ever been? I just simply do not believe that. Ocean temperatures, how do we know beyond the satellite era that the ocean temperatures a couple of hundred years ago, a couple of thousand years ago, wasn't as warm as it is today. Now, of course, we've just discovered 19,000 new volcanoes underwater. Is that providing a tremendous amount of heat release into the oceans? Therefore, that's responding to the atmosphere. Listen, folks, don't shoot me down for what I'm saying. I'm only simply asking questions with regards to climate, today's state, etc., etc., etc. But uh, these people that are saying, you know, showing us all these fancy charts and data, we know that data, you know, whether it be the Met Office or whether it be NASA or whatever, and the Met Office do a terrific job, and I really do enjoy following their, you know, broadcasts and etc. 
but I'm only simply asking some very simple questions, basic questions with regards to what's going on. So let's have a look at the temperatures for the 1st of July 2023 across the UK. Pretty poor for the start of July, 15, 14, 16. Only 21 to 23, it looks like, down across the southeast. Current temperatures, this is what it's looking like at this moment in time. The time just after 2 p.m., Sunday the 2nd of July. Only a temperature of 11.7 degrees at Lockless Garnock. And we are approaching the hottest time of the year. Yes, we've got a you know, measly, what, 17, 16.6 at, at the Aviemore, 14 degrees at Bishopton. To, to the west of Glasgow, <clears throat> we've only got in the north coast of Ireland. Ballypatrick Park, or Ballypatrick Forest, on the northeast coast of Antrim, of 10.2 Celsius on a July afternoon. That is rather chilly stuff. Only teens, high teens, 20 degrees down across the southeast of the UK. Let's have a quick look at the wind chill, by the way. That would be quite interesting to see. And look at this here. We've only got a wind chill of 7 at Ballypatrick Forest. We've only got a temperature on Donegal at Mallon Head. A wind chill of 9 Celsius. 9 Celsius at Loch Garnock here. Pretty astonishing stuff. We've got a wind chill at Drum Drumalbin of, well, it says 6, but it's, uh, yeah. A wind chill of 6 Celsius. Feels like 6 Celsius in the afternoon on the 2nd of July. Amazing stuff, isn't it? Compared to what we've just seen, of course, in June. So let's have a look and see what the extremes are around the world at the moment here. Some interesting cold temperatures recorded in the tropics, subtropics. So yeah, we can still get cold even in the hottest parts of the world. A uh, cold night and tropical. This is, of course, uh, Maximiliano's Twitter feed, extreme temperatures around the world. I look at that every Sunday, of course. We're seeing some record chilly temperatures. New Caledonia uh, island chain, we're also seeing cold temperatures recorded in parts of Oceania and um, Eastern Ireland. Uh, we also had some very chilly temperatures in uh, down in South, South Africa. Also, Reunion Island had uh, some record-breaking temperatures here as well. Of course, hot temperatures recorded in parts of uh, Spain and Portugal. We have seen 44 degrees, very hot conditions indeed. The United States, by the way. So, one of the coldest Junes on record for Las Vegas, the Western United States, we had uh, some incredible um, temperatures. for the, We've not even hit 120 in Death Valley yet, by the way. We're into July. Uh, record hot temperatures, of course. Texas reached 119 Fahrenheit. We've got uh, temperatures of 99 in Louisiana, up into Missouri, 105, 103. Uh, so very hot conditions in the central United States versus Chile in the east, Chile in the west here. Solar cycle of 25. June 2023 was on the rise. You can see here, if you look at his Twitter feed, the examples here, record breaking high temperatures, 32 degrees or 90 Fahrenheit, all the way up into the southwestern Nunavut territory in Canada here. Uh, our Antarctic sea ice is second lowest on record here, but the Arctic sea ice extends stands at 11th lowest on record and just above the 2010s average here. Our, our friend Zach Leib likes to talk climate change, likes to show that the planet is burning up. But uh, it's interesting nonetheless to see that uh, the Arctic had, uh, I believe, uh, above 80 degrees north, we had the coldest, according to Joe Bastardi anyway, the coldest May-June uh, period on record in the Arctic region for uh, the month of June, which is quite interesting here. Um, let's have a very quick check here. Uh, record breaking heat across Canada. Unusually cold temperatures in Iceland, according to Harry Hardrada. Uh, temperatures in w one location only four or five Celsius on Tuesday. That would be exceptionally cool and possibly break the five Celsius record low maximum for the month of July set back in 1970. This is Antarctic sea ice by our friend David Birch. And you can see here um, it is well below average, but recently it had been above average fluctuations, of course, record cold versus record warm in the, uh, in what do you call it, in, in Australia, sorry, uh, 2023 record breaking cold, uh, low Arctic sea ice. Unfortunately, I've run out of time here. I may cover a second video just to look at the rest of this stuff. So stay tuned for part two of the 40th of the